Hi there, this is Mr Evans. This video looks at Bowman's strategic clock and this time we're looking at position 6, 3, 2, 8. Um, and I realised that in the last video I didn't actually give a definition of what Bowman's strategic clock is. So, um, very much like Porter, what Bowman is trying to do with his strategic clock is to have a look at the, the viable strategic positions that a business can take in order to compete successfully in their market. Now these are supposed to be generic across markets, it doesn't matter if you're selling clothes, cars, uh, groceries. These strategic positions should be applicable across a range of different markets. So we could define Bowman's strategic clock as a model that considers the different strategic positions businesses could use to compete by assessing perceived value and selling price. <coughs> and in the previous video, I did go through um, strategies one through five, which are the strategies that are considered long-term and viable strategies for a business to follow um, and potentially compete long term in a market if the business can continue, of course, to exercise the strategy successfully. Um, the, you know, these would not be uh, long term positions if the business was failing to execute these strategies. But Bowman said if the business can do these strategies uh, well, then they will survive in the long run. Whereas positions six through to eight are in red because these are, these strategies are not viable in the long run uh, and we'll see why. Um, now these are all strategies that are towards the high price um, area of this continuum and the low value perceived benefit. So obviously any um, business trying to sell their product for a high price, consumers have got to believe that there is a high value attach that or else they're not going to buy the product. Now there may be an argument that you can get away for some period of time by selling an inferior poorly produced good or service um, for a high price for a while but that, that's not a tenable position, that's not going to be um, a long-term position for the business. So let's have a look at these strategies in a bit more detail. Well selling a, a product for an increased price but we've got a standard product this is position six increased price standard product <clears throat> well maybe that might happen for a short period of time maybe a competitor has entered a niche market we've been doing focus differentiation but because um, our competitors have, have managed to differentiate as well our product has now become standard we don't have something um, differentiating ourselves from everybody else our product has now become standard but we haven't quite caught up with that yet maybe we're still trying to sell that for the increased price whereas actually consumers uh, no longer see our product as differentiated and are only going to be willing to pay a standard price for that so we would either need to uh, invest in research and design innovation try and improve our product again so we can get back to being focused in differentiation or we need to cut our selling price um, so we may be following a hybrid or low price uh, strategy. In terms of monopoly pricing which is uh, down here we're still selling for a high price and got even lower value in terms of uh, customer perceptions well that's only going to be possible uh, if there are if there's no competition and it's only going to be possible in the long run if that's there are high barriers to entry. You know, if, if we're doing monopoly pricing, it implies we're selling an inf uh, a poor product um, for a high price, and, and we're making uh, what in economics would be called supernormal profit. Now, the um, <coughs> existence of supernormal profit is an attraction to businesses to enter the market. People see that this company is making huge profit, they realize that the product isn't particularly good, and that becomes um, a very high incentive to enter the market and there has to be something to keep competitors out if that's going to be a long-run position. It could be a patent that the business has on a particular product or process or it could be that the business um, is uh, somehow able to maintain brand loyalty. But the point is this is, this is not really um, a sustainable position. Finally, uh, the low value standard price, well that doesn't sound good does it, um, 
consumers don't value our products, but we're trying to sell it at standard price. Well, we're going to need to cut the price or improve the product in order to survive. Obviously, there's not huge numbers of uh, examples of businesses that follow these strategies because they're not good strategies to follow, and businesses that do follow them don't last long. But here's some examples, and I'm sure the management of each of these companies would uh, disagree with what I'm saying. But perhaps there's an argument that um, M&S, in terms of its clothing range, is uh, competing against people like Next, Topshop, um, etc. Maybe they're trying to sell a standard product for a slightly too high price. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but certainly M&S has had problems with its clothing for a long time. It's not attracting the, the consumers it needs to. And personally, I believe that, that you know, younger people particularly look at M&S as a little bit expensive and uh, not particularly good. So you could argue that at the moment, uh, M&S is somewhere around here and certainly they're working hard to improve their um, clothing range. Um, Southern Rail, uh, if you don't know Southern Rail, uh, it might be worth looking them up. Uh, Southern Rail uh, operate the railways between London and Brighton and other uh, uh, places on the south coast. Um, and there have been terrible strikes on the line, which has made those people who are commuting, which is lots of people, from that south coast region into London, their lives have been made a misery. But... Um, Really, there's no alternative to the railway. I mean, you can go on the roads, but the congestion's uh, pretty poor. Um, but there's no competition for Southern. I mean, they are the people who run the railway in that area. There's not, you know, five sets of tracks with five sets of competitors going through the area. It's what we call a natural monopoly, where there's one railway company, and it makes sense. And unfortunately for the passengers on that line, at the moment, they're not getting a good service from Southern and they've got no alternative but to go back. So, um, you know, Southern are charging relatively high prices. Um, it's arguable that the customer service is, is, is pretty poor at the moment, and they are in a monopoly pricing position. Finally, uh, Monarch Airways, a uh, company that went out of business recently. Um, I'm recording this in November 2017. Um, they were competing against the likes of uh, Ryanair, EasyJet, and there was an argument that maybe they're, they're selling like what people view as quite a low value product um, and trying to sell that for a standard price. They weren't able to compete with the uh, you know low price strategy being taken by EasyJet and Ryanair, and, um, and that's meant that they have gone out of business. So some examples there of uh, position six to eight on Bowman's strategic clock.